This National Professional Anglers Association video presentation is brought to you by Missouri Secrets Tackle and 241 Inc. Productions. Um, my name is Ron Bearfield. I, I've been guiding full time for where that's all I do except for when I work for different manufacturers um, for 26 years full time now. And uh, before that I was doing a lot of part time stuff, but I was also a district manager for Berkeley Fishing Tackle Company for a lot of years when they were in Spirit Lake. And so I've been in the industry a long time and used to fish a lot of tournaments. Uh, decided uh, after managing one of the Gander Mountain stores, the, not the last one that went under, but the one before that that went under, uh, being one of the managers there in the Madison store, and I was guiding uh, part-time. They went under. They wanted us, all of us to take cuts and pay and work more hours and do all that. And I said, wait a minute, something wrong with this picture here. I think I'm going to get out of corporate America. So my wife says, "Hey, you've got people calling you all the time, wanting to, you know, wanting you to guide for them and fish, and you can't because you're working and you're trying to do this." Um, I decided to do it, and that was exactly 26 years ago. Um, I decided to go and and go full time. Uh, the first first couple of uh, seasons, or first actually a little more than that, first three or four seasons probably. You know, things were a little slower, a little leaner. You know, I was doing 60 to maybe 100 days a year, uh, which was still not bad. Um, as I got going, got my business rolling, uh, all of a sudden, word of mouth, I was advertising online, and I was uh, with Lake Link and, and doing some of those things uh, for, for advertising to drum up business. I was doing seminars, fishing clubs, and all that kind of stuff. And people knew my name. They just didn't uh, didn't know about my guide business, but... To be very honest, now I'm giving away 40 to 60 trips a year to other guides uh, that I know personally that will do a good job for people. I don't just give them to anybody, but which is, I think, common sense. You know, you don't want them to have a bad trip at all. You want people coming back to you. So now I'm, you know, anywhere from 180 to 186, 187 days a year guiding, um, which keeps me pretty busy because I don't do very much ice fishing guiding because I don't like to drill 100 holes a day. <laughs> and chase fish all day long you know it's uh it's a lot more work i mean as i get a little bit older i'm saying hey you know i'm going to stick to just the summertime but not saying that uh it's not a lucrative business to guide in the winter time it was when i was doing it but now it's pretty much just all summer um what i'm going to try to try to do is give you some ideas as to why i feel i'm successful at what i've done um we we've, we've i'll give you some ideas of where to start? A lot of you may already have ideas. I don't. Are there any guides in here right now that are guiding? Good. Uh, Minnesota. Lake Erie. Lake Erie. Okay, that's a great fishery. How's the ice out there right now? Pretty good. Yeah, uh -huh. good. I was out there this week. Oh. Snow, snow today. Oh. <laughs> I was out there a few years ago when they had to tell, take the helicopters out and get the guys. Right. I was one of the lucky ones. I was on the right side of the crack. Right. <laughs> but uh, what we're going to do is a. You know, I'll start out with the communication with clients. You know, when a customer calls and, and, or emails you and says, hey, I'm looking for a date, uh, I want to know what your rates are, I want to know, hey, what can you do for me? Or maybe it's your name was given to me by uh, a guy that guided for you, with you uh, last year. Uh, no matter what it is, on, that, on this one right here, get back to the people in a timely manner. Don't wait three, four days, say, I'll get to, I'll call him later tonight or I'll call him in the morning. And it can be the next morning. It doesn't have to be necessarily that night if you don't have the time. Because a lot of times I know when I get off the water, I'm getting the boats ready for the next day and I'm going, oh, I got, you know, my wife will say, hey, you know, you've got four calls in there wanting dates. And uh, you know, you, okay, I'll give him a call back. So, but I may wait till in the morning to do it. But on a timely manner, don't let them sit all week and go, next, I'll get a hold of them this weekend. That is one thing that uh, I've, you know, I know guys that, uh, that have done that and do it a lot still. And uh, they'll find that this guy has found somebody else. He was hot to go and, hey, nobody got back to me in a couple days. So the, that's very important. Um, reach out to your clients several days before your scheduled trip. You know, I'll, like the week before, I'll usually call these guys and make sure everything's still on the up and up and ready to go. Um, Find out a little bit more about what they want to fish for. Maybe they want to fish for walleye. Maybe they want to fish for bass. I'm multi-species guide, so maybe they want to fish for catfish. You know, you just never know. I don't. The money's good either way. You know, I mean, I don't care what I fish for. Um, 
But anyway, find out ahead of time, uh, several days before your scheduled trip, as to what this guy's looking for, what kind of a trip is he looking for. You know, it's very important. Um, following up uh, electronically, emails, text, communications, or with a phone call, same thing as I was saying earlier. Get a hold of, of the guy, you know, the week before, or, or right away when he calls you. Let him know that, hey, I got your call. I am, you know, here's, here's the information you wanted. Uh, I found out that, and, and a lot of my business nowadays, I'll say, is, is word of mouth and return business. Um, I very, do very little advertising anymore. I'm not saying advertising is not good. It's great. It really is. The, you know, the, the new uh, websites and, and different things you can put together, Facebook, it keeps your name out there. I'm just at the point where, like I say, I'm giving away 40, 60 trips a year. I'm getting older, I guess is what I'm saying. And it's, uh, but for you younger guys, hey, you can, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna be able to, to put together as many trips as you really want to. So, uh, but don't, don't leave the client hanging. Same, same thing, don't leave him just hanging there, hanging there, hanging there. Get a hold of him, communicate with him. Um, the early communication allows you to also understand better the species maybe or the locations uh, your client is interested in learning, learning about. You know, I'll get guys, I'll ask them, first thing I'll ask them is, hey, you want to fish Lake Mendota? Are you looking for a river trip? You know, find out, get more information about what he wants to fish for. Maybe the guy wants to be prepared to fish for bass or anything. Maybe he wants to fish for walleyes. You start out with walleyes. If the walleye bites a little bit off, and it can be a lot. Hey, but I've got a good bass bite a little later in the morning. Have, have the right tackle, appropriate tackle in the boat. Go fish bass. Get him into bass for a little while. And you can always go back and fish for the walleyes now. But find out what he's interested in and what he wants to learn about. Maybe he wants to learn how, uh, how to catch walleyes with jigs. Or maybe he wants to learn to troll. You know, and, and uh, by being able to, to, to do that, you, you, the people understand that, hey, you sh this guy went out of his way to show me how to fish jigs, and I'm going to tell my buddy about that, you know. We, we didn't kill him today, but we still caught fish, and I learned something. I learned how to fish that jig. But you're doing what he wanted to, wanted to do. Same thing with your bookkeeping. Bookkeeping keeping and, uh, and the records, I, I try to keep it as, as simple as possible. I keep a calendar book. Of course, you get the gentleman's name in there or the lady's name in there. Um, the date of the trips, you know, your location uh, and water the client would like to fish. I keep all this information, species of fish the client would like to fish, time and location for the meeting. And that's another important thing. Make sure that you get the, the time where you're going to meet and tell the guy, hey, this is, uh, we're going to meet at Warner Park at 7 a.m. You know, that's when we'll start. That's very important because otherwise they're, they're hanging there and then they're calling you that morning saying, hey, well, wh where were we going? You know, make sure you uh, communicate with them and let them know. Uh, record keeping. Now, there's another, and, and this kind of gets into the tax thing, and there's, there's another seminar someplace on, the, on today on the uh, tax preparations and things for guiding, and I, I won't get into that a lot. I do take a security deposit. You know, you can figure out what, you think you need to have, uh, mo since most of my clients are uh, return business customers now and, and, and uh, word of mouth people, I pretty much know that they're gonna, they are gonna go, I don't get s stiffed or stood up very often at all that I can, and it's been a long time since then, but uh, I'll take you know, 50 to $100 down. Depending if the guy is new, I might say, oh, you know, I need $100 to hold that day for you. You've got 48 hours to let me know, you know, if you can't make it. Because within 48 hours, that's fairly reasonable. I'll give you your money back. Um, I can usually, I've got a list of guys that I can call and say, okay, so-and-so uh, canceled out. That, you know, would you like this day? And I'll, I've got a whole list of guys I can go through that, that I keep that... Um, I can call and say, hey, this day's open if you're still interested. Um, <clears throat> one thing you're going to want to do, uh, keep good, if, if you take mileage, some guys are going to try to write off the truck. I find that the mileage works better for me. That's the way my tax guy told me to do it. He said, you'll do better by writing off your mileage because I put on quite a few miles uh, rather than try to write a, write a, a truck off. And, but then in some situations, and your tax guy can tell you, may, you might want to write the truck off instead of the mileage. So there's different ways of doing that. Um, you know, the date, um, odometer and start and end, of course, uh, and a purpose of the trip or where you're going. For instance, I'll write down, uh, 
okay, today it was Lake Mendota, uh, Warner Park boat landing. You know, so, so if they want to go back and check your mileage, <laughs> if, if they ever audit you, uh, they can, okay, this is where you went. Or I'll put on there Wisconsin Dells, you know, uh, McFarland to Wisconsin Dells. Um, but anyway, keep a good odometer uh, start and end and the, and the business uh, purpose or trip location. Fuel receipts, you know, for your boat, uh, naturally, if you're taking mileage, you're not going to be able to take fuel for your truck. Um, usually, you can do a little better by taking the 55 cents a mile or whatever, depending every year, it varies a little bit. But um, keep your guide insurance receipts, too. And that's another thing I know that we'll talk about a little later is guide insurance. But keep your receipts with that. Um, lures, tackle, uh, you know, there, you'll be surprised what you can wrap in there. Again, your tax man will be able to tell you what you're legally can and can't do. Um, again, community, uh, community, communication and opportunities. Uh, the security deposit, 48 hours for clients to cancel. Keep a waiting list of clients if there's a cancellation, just like I uh, touched on. Um, all in very important uh, points that, that uh, you should be doing. Also, in the, that 48-hour period, let's say a guy down the road, you know, maybe three weeks out or something like that, or the day before calls, and if I know the guy well enough, and, hey, I've got an emergency, a met, we had a medical emergency, I'm not one of these guys that, oh, that's too bad, you know. It, it, it's just good business to say, because it doesn't happen that often, to say, oh, no problem, you know, um, you know, I'll, you know here's, your, here's your $100 back or whatever. Um, it's just good business because that same guy's going to remember that and he's going to come back. And you'll know after once you've been in the business for a little while, you'll know which guys are pulling your leg and going, yeah, you know, I just didn't, didn't want to go. I got drunk, didn't want to. But uh, anyway, and that's something that you'll have decision you'll have to make on your own. But uh, sometimes that will happen. Uh, professionalism. You know, be a constant professional. As as Pat was saying downstairs, you know. Uh, be professional when you're talking in public or speaking to, to, to groups. You know, don't be cussing and swearing and, you know, things like that. Um, dress professionally. Clean clothes, weather appropriate. I see guys all the time going to be a guide. This is down, and I'll use the Madison area as an example because there's quite a few guys that, boy, I'm going into guiding. I'm a good fisherman. I like to fish. At guiding, you'll, you'll find if you like to fish... It's, you're probably, I very seldom pick a pole up. Um, but they don't, they'll, they got their holy blue jeans on. They probably haven't washed them for three, four days. You know, got a big dirty shirt on, tears in it, you know. And uh, I'm not saying you can't have your favorite old fishing hat on or that, but dress a little more professionally. It, 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 it leaves a better impression um, on the client. You know, he's looking at you, he's, wow, man, this guy, I was expecting some guy that smells like fish. Well, hopefully by the end of the day, we do smell like fish. But, you know, uh, clean clothes, uh, weather appropriate, of course, you know, too. Um, use professional language and etiquette. Uh, be mindful of inappropriate language in conversation. In other words, and we'll all slip up once in a while. There's no doubt about it. it you know, you, you, uh, you just lost that 50-inch muskie and, you know, you hear it on TV all the time and the guy's in there bleeping it out. Just keep it within reason. It, it doesn't matter if you're with a bunch of guys or... Um, Guys and especially with guys and their kids, it's a, you know you definitely want to watch watch your language. Uh, be professional, in other words, again. And we all know what you know how that can get out of hand. Sometimes guys will get talking amongst themselves, and I, we, I mean I've I've been there, done that too. And it's just just kind of watch your conversation. I guess I find that 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 goes a long ways with a lot of people, and they they appreciate it. And at the end of the day. Uh, it pays off usually with good tips. So, um, be patient with your clients. You know, it's it's you're going to get a lot of people that do not fish a lot, and uh, I mean, I get a lot of people that are first time fishermen, and that's why another reason that I furnish, I, I let people bring their own tackle if they want to, but I also furnish all the tackle and make sure I have all the appropriate tackle in the boat um, for people to fish with. And I may have a couple of spin cast outfits in there. You never know. It's, I've run into that several times where, oh, I can't use one of these, you know. I, got, I need the one that you push the button. Okay, well, we'll fix you right up. And 
So, and I know there's only so much room in a boat, but you, you need to cater to those, those customers. Every now and then you're going to get one like that, um, a person like that. Uh, but be patient with your, you know, they're, they're coming to, to you. They want your knowledge. They want you to teach them, want you to help them. A lot of people, you're going to get some guys too that are like us that, hey, they fish a lot and they're going to be good. I get a lot of those guys. Uh, all they want to do is catch fish, and they're they're good at it. And you don't have to. It's you know you're not babysitting them. You're you're not having to worry about uh, uh, your clients uh, uh, not having the knowledge these guys have it. But be, you got to be patient with these guys. Um, don't get mad at them. I'll, and I'll use a name. It doesn't bother me to use his name at all. But um, up by Boulder Junction, we were fishing Big Lake one day, and. Uh, the guy in another, another the guy in another boat was over maybe 100 yards from us. Well, the guy had a fish follow. We were fishing muskies, and uh, this this guy starts yelling at him for not doing a figure eight. And I mean, he was cussing at him, and just because the guy did forgot to do a figure eight, you know. I mean, it's things like that. You got to have patience with these guys. They're not going to do it all the time. And this guy is a this guy's a professional that you see on TV on a regular basis. Um, he doesn't guide too much anymore, but um, anyway, uh, like I say, uh, it, nice. I know him. I know him very well. But he, I've heard him so many times get on clients just for not doing a figure eight, and that's not right. You need to educate him. Hey, look, you know, you, you should should have done a figure eight. That fish that followed, he may have hit, you know, and uh, that's why he was upset about what fish had followed and the guy didn't do it. But anyway. Another thing, don't fish in front of your clients before they get the opportunity. I, guide in, I guided in Canada for quite a few years. This is the first year I haven't been up there in about 12 or 13 years for a couple of weeks of uh, doing seminars and educating at a couple of the lodges up there. And at the end of the day, they'll come in from, say, muskie fishing. And the guy, these Canadian guys, the guys will all come up and we'll, I'll talk to them in the lodge, have a seminar in there, and all the, all the people from the, will come in and, how'd you do today? Well, we didn't do so good. The guy did okay. Dropped the trolling motor. And, I mean, these people are upset about it. I mean, I don't blame them. Dropped the trolling motor. Well, he, you know, I know where all that structure's at, where every little point I want to hit on that bar is. He was hitting everything before the, these, these guides were hitting everything before the client got to it. I said, I, I can't believe you. And I told the guides this. They kind of got a little upset with me, but I said, you know, I can't believe you guys even pick a rod up until maybe at the end after everybody's gone through it and you've showed them where everything's at. But that type of thing will come back to bite you. Um, I very seldom pick a rod up. Um, only time you should be fishing is to show technique. You know, we're not out there to fish. We're out there to show that guy to fish. I'm not there to catch the fish. If the guy says, hey, come on, come on, fish with us. So, you know, show us what we need to do. Do it. By all means, fish with them a little bit. But after a little bit, maybe stick a fish or two. You know, be professional about it. Lay your rod down and say, okay, there's what you got to do, guys. Catch these fish. Um, you know, I'll do that all the time. Like I say, I very seldom will pick a rod up when I have guys in the boat, except when they ask me to, to show them what to do or maybe to show them where, okay, here's what I want you to do. Fish that inside turn there. Fish to show lure presentation, same thing. You know, it's... You may fish a little bit, show them what you want them to do, and then, then again, educate them. Set that rod down. Okay, here's what you, you know, now let's see you do that. Let, you know, um, fish to explain uh, what you're doing and why you're doing it. This will educate your clients. You know, in other words, you know, explain what you're doing and why you're doing that. That's, people remember that. And that's another reason that, I don't know if, uh, that I do the best job at that, but, Evidently, the people are liking something because they're coming back. So, you know, it's just, just little things like this that I don't see happening with a lot of these guys. Yeah, they'll guide, they're going to guide, you know, and they're going to guide um, uh, the Madison chain. They're there one season maybe, and then they're gone. You never hear from them again. You never see them again. You know, you see them on the water once, oh, I decide not to do that. You know? Okay. And a lot of it's because they were fishing in front of their clients. They were sticking the fish. The client wasn't. Or they weren't telling them how they're presenting that lure. You know, maybe one day the a Ned rig for smallmouth bass, for instance, was was hot. Uh, I know one guy; he had the hot color on. They wanted they had a color that was, I mean, the 
they were that California craw, they were all over it. He was catching fish, but he was fishing in front of them. He was fishing the right color. Didn't even bother. And once he started catching fish, he didn't even bother to change the bait for these guys. Hey, tie on one for them. They're, you know, at least do that. But he didn't. And uh, I know he didn't last very long either. And don't get me wrong. They're not everybody's like that. There's a lot of very good guides out there. But some of these guys, just it doesn't sink in. They just think it's a job that, you know, you're going to pay them to go fishing so they can fish. Equipment maintenance. You know, always have well-maintained and functional uh, equipment. In other words, keep your reels, your rods, keep everything up to date. Keep everything working smoothly. Uh, your locators, your electronics, uh, make sure it works. You know, you get out there, uh, you know, don't, don't have the appropriate action rods. You know, they're just the simple things. Keep equipment in good working order. You know, this guy didn't want to go out there and fit. He's fit. Oh, the handle. Oh, what do I do? Oh, yeah, I meant to fix that. Here, I got some more tape. <laughs> you know, uh, you'll see rods and reels, like, t guides taped on the rods. You know, th stuff like that. Keep, your, keep your, your equipment in good working order so that this guy's having a great experience. You know, if anybody has any questions also while we're going through some of these, if you do, we'll try to get it answered for you. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, but... If, if you have any questions, otherwise afterwards we'll, we'll answer them too. Um, have multiple fishing rods and reels for multiple species of fish. In other words, like I was saying earlier, the guy wanted to fish for walleyes. Yeah, the walleyes are a little slow. We can cut a couple, but, you know, hey, the bass have been hot. You want to go catch some bass? Boom, you got the right tackle in the rod box. You know, so now you put the walleye stuff away, you grab a couple bass rods, boom, you take them over, let them have a good time, catch a few bass, maybe some pike. Um, or panfish. Maybe maybe the guys are saying, I say, hey, you know, how'd you you guys want to you know catch 15 bluegills or so to take home and, and our crappies and you know since we'll come back and fish the walleyes a little bit later, let's go over and you know these fish would be good in the pan for you. You know, we'll go over and catch those guys. Have fun with a you know an ultra light rod. Have one or two in the boat. But anyway, have uh, multiple fishing rods and reels for multiple species of fish along with you just in case. Maintained uh, fishing line and you know it'll increase your catch. Uh, make sure you replace the line uh, because it, you get a lot of wear and tear. And like the Wisconsin River here, for an example, it, I go through, I fish a lot of Power Pro um, for the simple reason it doesn't wear out as quick as, as monofilament will or fluorocarbons even throughout this tough wood and rocks and stuff like that. And I don't find in this stained water, I'll naturally will look at the, at the water clarity. If the water's super clear and I can see down 20 feet in water, eh, I'm probably going to use a fluorocarbon leader on that, on that Power Pro or straight fluorocarbon, but on the river, the stained water, you can tie a bait right to the power pro and pitch it in there and it's plastic or spinner bait. It does not, the fish don't shy away from it, you know. So there again, wear and tear, make sure you t keep your, your line in good shape. Um, uh, bring equipment uh, out of the harsh environment at night sometimes or keep it in your rod box, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I a lot of times will use a rod sleeve when I've got uh, rods in the, in the, so that they don't get all tangled up. So, you know, and that also protects your line and takes care of the rod. You know, uh, again, your, your uh, functional electronics. Take care of your electronics. They're, they're very important to you. Yeah, oh, this, yeah, I used to, how, oh, how deep are we in right now? Well, you know, it was yesterday it was 10 feet, you know, or the day before it was 10 feet. Have good working electronics. Uh, in other words, have a, if you can, and I'm not saying it's, it's a necessity, but it, it really is kind of a necessity. You have a backup locator, even if it's a, uh, maybe not a, a, a Helix 10, but maybe it's a 7. Something, you know, at a lower price point, but you can throw it on there and you can use the same transducer, you know. So you don't have to worry about changing out, just change the unit out. Um, trolling motors the same way, you know. Keep them maintained, keep them running, you know, uh, or your Talon, or if you're using a Talon or a power pole, whichever. Um, make sure that they work well and not, yeah, they're not hanging up. That can really ruin a trip real quick. If you get out there and it's real windy, drop that trolling motor, uh-oh. Ah, oh, my batteries, I know what it is. You know, make sure you keep them maintained. Batteries, everything like that. Um, have a functioning, well-maintained um, personal flotation devices. You know, the, the, the new uh, PFDs that are, that you, you know, automatic ones that if a guy falls in the water, they notice that. A lot of these people are scared of water, some of them. And, uh, 
if you've got a nice PFD like that, they know about them, they've read about them, and maybe they don't have them they're, because they're an expensive item. Uh, make sure you've got good ones, not all dirty, and you know how <laughs> they get kind of grungy after a while. Mine, my own does, you know, from sweating and just getting them dirty. Just keep them clean, keep a set for the clients. Um, make them look good, and they'll, they'll appreciate also having a, something that if they happen to fall in the water, Hey, it'll automatically inflate for them, and they don't have to worry about, uh-oh, where's the, where's the handle to pull? Um, comfort items for your, for your, you know, like bug sprays and sunscreen, first aid, et cetera. You know, you, I keep this in my glove box, I, my first aid kits. Um, bug spray, sunscreen, first, you know, they're not going to always remember to bring it. I put that in, my, in our brochure or on my on a, on a website and say okay here's what you should bring bring a camera but not every you know not everybody does that bring your lunch i don't furnish lunch or, or drinks um you know some guide services do i found out i was taking back more food and drink than the guys were eating because oh i can't eat that or i can't eat this you know and ahead of time i guess it might be a good idea if, if you're going to furnish to find out what the guy can eat and what he can't oh i don't like turkey uh ham and cheese nah you know, you got any tuna fish, you know. But uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of the equipment and maintenance part of it. And there's a pile of my rods on the front deck that my son took a picture of. Where he says, hey, Dad, you're always talking about maintenance. What, you got a pile of rods? I said, yeah, I'm getting ready. To, I haven't put them all up yet from the day. <laughs> but uh, equipment and maintenance, again, always have backup equipment on hand, backup locators, trolling motors, rods and reels, Multiple boats if possible. I run two boats. I actually got three, but my wife says it's too many. No, but uh, I also is one of the reasons that I'm guiding 187 days a year. Uh, okay, it's we got three footers on Mendota today. Guys, I'm going to grab the jet boat we're running to the river if you'd like. We can switch it up because it's going to be too dangerous fishing Mendota. There's just no place to tuck in down on that Madison chain. It's really, you know, that you can fish effectively for what you want to do, you know necessarily so you know I try to try to keep an eye on the weather and if it's going to be nasty and I know it's going to have it be a northwest wind on Mendota there's one place behind picnic point you can tuck in other than that the whole lake's going to be just so rough you can't hold anywhere or you're fighting it all day so I'll try to transfer them to another boat and that's again that's not for everybody not everybody's going to be able to afford to have two boats I've been fortunate over the years you know and and I'm not running uh, program boats either. I, I buy my boats. I don't. I've had offers. To be very honest, uh, some of the some of the offers are good. Um, some of them aren't so good. <laughs> you spend more time working for the manufacturer it shows than what the discounts are worth. But uh, but then there's other ones like Lund and some of the better companies like Ranger and some of the other ones. Uh, they have some very good programs out there. But anyway, I prefer to purchase my own boats and own them. And I usually try to sell them about every three years so that you're not getting too many hours on the motors. Um, and by running two boats, that's another thing. You're not putting as much uh, time on one particular motor all summer long. You know, it kind of splits it up, and, and that helps a little bit too. Uh, stay, there again, stay on top of your maintenance. Motors, uh, pumps, clean and professional environment in that boat. Keep, try to keep it clean. You know, have, don't, don't look like John Gillespie tripping all over boats and rods and stuff in his boat when he's you know i know it's part of his is for the tv program but but uh you know don't have rods flying all over the place and guys stepping all over them and and things um, have the appropriate supplies on hand live bait lures and tackle whatever you're going to be doing for that day make sure you've got that and and organize and prepare for for multi-species again if the walleye bite if the bass bites not maybe the walleye's been going good or the pike been going good or even the panfish for that matter Hey, let's go do this for a little while. Let them catch some fish. Then we'll go back and fish for those walleyes. It might be a little bit tougher still, but you know, let's go. Let's go stretch your string a little bit. Let's go catch some fish. Let's go catch some big cats. You ever have a big fish stretch your string? I get guys like that all the time, fishing walleyes, and I'll say, Hey, you want to catch a big fish? Something that'll really stretch your string? Usually, they're naturally they're gonna, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Let's, and I, I won't tell them exactly what we're gonna fish for, but we'll get up in there, and I've got a couple spots where where we can get some uh, uh, pretty big catfish and uh, and this and and t let them catch some of these 17 20 pound we get a lot of 20 pounders and uh, channel cats and uh, let something that just fights the heck out of them and 
they just have a good time with it. And they, whether they catch a ton of walleyes or not, they go back to walleye fishing. They're going, I've got guys that will actually go back. And if the walleye bite's still a little slower, even though they'll be catching some walleyes, hey, can we go back and fish for those catfish again? Or can we go back and catch some of those bigger fish again? So always keep that in the back of your mind. Um, opportunities, too, that I've learned over the years is don't be the cheapest guide on the water. You don't have to be. People are looking for a good guide. And if you're good at what you do and you follow everything we've kind of talked about here, and your professionalism and everything like it, it they'll pay the price. People will pay the price for, the, for a good trip. Uh, you show them a good time on the water, and if they have a good time, you know, uh, um, I'll average anywhere from myself from $400 to $500 a day on average probably, sometimes more, uh, depending on if the guy's had a great time or caught a ton of fish, you know, and you're going to have days, believe me, as, a, as I'm saying right here, under promise and over deliver. Don't commit or guarantee the number of fish you'll catch. You know, I hear this all the time. These guys, ah, oh, no problem. I'm on them. We're going to tear them up. And these people are, oh, boy, we're going to tear them up. You get out there, and that bite's not exactly what it was the day before or the day before that. And uh, all of a sudden, you're going, uh-oh, you know. Now what do I do? Make sure you got a game plan that uh, even, even though the fish, all the fish species might be shut off a little bit that day, you have a game plan where you can, can you, okay, I didn't guarantee this guy a ton of fish, but we'll have a good time. You'll get an honest effort. You know, that's all I can tell you right now. I get guys all the time, you guarantee fish. Hey, I guarantee you a good time and an honest effort, you know. We'll catch some fish. I mean, it's, we don't get skunked, but I'll tell you what, there's some days where you think you're going to, and we all run into that. So don't uh, commit or, or guarantee numbers of fish. You just can't do that. And people understand that. After, you know, if, as long as you don't try to blow smoke up their skirt, you know, you're okay. Uh, take up a lot of pictures. Keep a nice camera or, or your phone camera in the boat. They've probably got theirs. Take, offer to take pictures. You know, share the pictures with your clients. And uh, keep clients coming back. That, that does, I mean, you send them pictures. They had a good day. Uh, this young man here got this big smallmouth. Send that to his dad. You know, send that picture of him holding that big smallmouth. They, we, you know, most of the guys I get let the bass go. They don't keep them anyway. Not gonna, we don't keep big walleyes, you know, and we, our muskies or even big pike for that matter, you know. We may go catch some, some smaller walleyes to, to eat or, or something like that, and you may get a picture of them with a string or a fish like that. But take a picture like that. That's, you know, those are pretty nice pictures to, to send to them. And there again, with the social media situation, you can send, pretty easily send uh, pictures to these guys. And they'll get them right away. Oh, and they're excited. Then they're showing them to their friends. Hey, I was with this guy. Well, who are you with? Who are you with? Here's his number. Give him a call. It goes a long ways. Um, offer gift certificates. Allow clients to share their positive experience with others. In other words, at Chris, you'd be surprised at Father's Day how many gift certificates I go through. I've got, well, from gift certificates right now, and I mean, I get up front, paid up front for the gift certificate. It's not a, you know, okay, put $100 down. It's, you're paying for that trip. Um, I've got probably, well, I've got probably 50 trips booked in for next year right now already, or for this year, <laughs> next year. We're already in next year. Um, for this year, and, and there's probably another 20 gift certificates for Christmas, uh, birthdays, things like that that people have bought that have been out with me that purchased us for a son-in-law or whatever. So offer gift certificates. You can get a nice uh, gift certificate made up or you can buy them at, uh, like I think, believe it's Staples has them. And, and what I did was took one of my, uh, like one of my business cards, put it in the middle of it over a gift certificate, just laid it in there, made a copy of it in my, off my copy machine. Uh, with the, there again with the computer, print off and buy a little heavier card stock, print off three at a time on a sheet okay now you got your your template you can uh you can print them off and and make your own with your name on them and everything and uh keep track of them naturally you got to keep a book of them but uh it's it's a great way to pick up some extra money it really is um website content uh you know it provides uh clients with information they need you know don't Get on there and beat your chest about how great you are, how, man, I, I catch big fish, I catch a lot. That's fine and dandy. You can let them know you, you do well, but don't just keep beating it up about yourself how great you are. I see so many of these websites now that have that on how this guy's so good. And he's won all these tournaments and he's done all this. Um, 
you know, the, uh, keep, give them your rates, where you fish, uh, species of fish that's available to fish for.